you'd think would win the match, but that's a few shots away just yet. Well, Rick Allen's in a position where the only bit of the red he can hit, so he's got a cannon into the green. I think he's got a cannon into the green, just push the red to the side cushion, get the green out. I don't think he can hit enough of it, can he? Oh, he could miss the green. Yeah. That was... That was handy. I thought he was more or less guaranteed, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did. Actually, he's got a really good line up there. Mark Selby, I don't think, can go off a cu one cushion, can he, with extreme left-hand side, unless he really swerved it. He's got really swerved this. He's not going to be able to catch much of it. He doesn't like it. Don't like it either. No, I mean... What else does he do, though? Well, the one cushion, two cushion escape. The green's in the way. Yeah. I mean, up and down off the black cushions, nightmare. I think he's got to do it. He's got to catch the swerve perfectly and try and get enough of the red to get it past the middle pockets. Maybe there's a one cushion escape off yeah. the bark cushion. Before the green with Just left hand the side. Green. Yeah. Tons of left hand side. Try and get lucky playing across the face of the red. Yep. Does he play it controlled or hard? Well, if you play it hard and you miss it, you're going to leave a free ball. Well, he managed to get off two cushions. Oh, unlucky, really. Yep. It's not safe, but as we keep saying, key to this frame and match is the green ball. Ideally, he'd like to play Thank pink you. to get on the yellow, I suppose. But if he can get the right angle off the yellow to break open the green, it's probably the better choice. It's all about the angle. And the angle that Steve's talking about to pop the yellow and run through. Three. And not the green towards the pocket the yellow's going in. Says he landed perfect. If not, then for me, well, maybe you can pop the yellow and then play safe off the green. I don't see he's looking at the green and. But if you play that green with any kind of pace to try and get position on the brown, it makes it so much more difficult. He obviously hasn't got the angle to run through and develop the, the green, the way he's playing it. It looks like it's pretty close. Severe top spin, maybe with side spin. Oh, he flicked it out beautifully. It's still Five. difficult, but he's given himself a chance. The blue's a bit in the way. He's got to take that into consideration as well. Yep. And he needs the blue as well. Just caught the edge of it. Developed it. In it goes. In it goes. He played for it in the corner. He'll have to settle for the eight. middle, but this brown will put him 17 points in front, but there's still 18 remaining. Oh, what a horrible brown this is to play in the centre pocket. It hasn't got a great deal to do with the cue ball. 
If he pots it, he's going to have a sniff at the blue. Great shot. Fantastic shot. Brave as you are. Well, just this blue. It's been a tough night. He's made a 147. Can he convert this blue? He's won it now. What a match. He's had everything. But he's 22 points in front with just 13 remaining. Surely that's enough to get him over the line. It's been drama all the way. Pinks. Where's the pink ball going? In the pocket, that's where. And after a titanic struggle, neither player really at the best holding you so that much. Alan, who made a maximum and another ton, but he'll just be relieved to be in the semi-final. Great match, great theatre here at the Alexander Palace. Mark Allen beats Mark Selby by six frames to five, and he's in the semi-final. What a night. What a night. What a comeback. The maximum that had everything. Yeah, I don't know where that maximum came from because it was it was a really poor performance tonight and I just hung in there and hung in there and I started to feel a little bit better at 4-3 and 4-all, but like Mark said yesterday in his interview, we should have just started at midnight and played one frame because it was always going to go 5-all. But what a testament to your tenacity that you dug in there and hung on against a man who's won 22 ranking titles and the Masters three times to your one so far. Yeah, well, that's all you can ever do is just hang in there. You never know how a match can change. And I was applying myself really well. I just couldn't find any rhythm. And as the match with Donna grew into it, but I would have been kicking myself if I'd lost after missing the easy red on 51. Uh, completely took my eye off it. But any win against Mark's a good win. So I'll take that into tomorrow, but I'll need to play better. And just back on the 147, what a moment. The whole place was electrified. That's got to be one of the standout moments of your career so far in the context in which you've done it and the person in the other chair. Yeah, absolutely. To do it here at the Masters, you know, one of the Triple Crown events, it was very special. It wasn't the best cue ball in the world, but uh, it made it more exciting for the crowd and a bit more nerve-wracking for me, but I'm glad I've finally done it for the fans. On behalf of everyone here, it was a privilege to see that. And Mark Allen, we'll see you tomorrow night in the semis. What a night for that man there, Mark Allen. He hasn't made it to the semi-finals of this tournament since winning it back in 2018. And boy, has he had to battle his way to get to this stage. The final frame decider against Higgins and now a final frame decider against Mark Selby. He delivered a maximum break along the way. There are a few uncharacteristic mistakes in there, but he got there in the end. And boy, will he be feeling relieved. Uh, maybe someone should tell Mark, but you don't <laughs> have to play all 11 frames. You are. It is OK to win with a few frames to spare but goodness me what a what a comeback at 4-1 forget the 147 for a minute at 4-1 down you would never have said he was going to win because they were both not playing great but Selby did look the better at that point somehow Mark Allen dug himself out of trouble and you know when you get to a decider it is just about who can stand up and that final frame revolved very much around that green, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The green needed breaking out, as Steve said in commentary. He got perfectly on the yellow. He was able to run through the yellow with a load of right-hand side, create the angle. Wasn't quite there. And as you see here, the yellow goes in the left half of the pocket, which enables the cue ball to go straighter and flicks the green out. Now, he did mess the green up, it has to be said, and he finished up way out of position on the brown. I wasn't sure he was going to go for this, because they've been so defensive all night. But what a shot that was. What courage. Because if you miss that, you don't know where it's going to go. It, you could have fought all night for nothing. It went in, and it was phenomenal. It was just absolutely a brilliant, brilliant comeback. And uh, we've got the last pink as well. It was just beautiful the way he wrapped up the frame. Yeah, because, of course, you know, you, you're playing against Selby. You know if you don't pop this pink, he's coming back to the table to chase the snookers. Um, but, you know, he didn't give, the, he didn't give him a chance to get out.
Four hours, 21 minutes and three seconds later, he is through to the semi-final. And, you know, we're in the early hours of the morning, so he's got to get a lot of rest and recuperation before he's back out there later on tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Technically, you know, if we want to be specific about it, he had the 147 yesterday. Oh, of course he did. <laughs> I like that he pointed that out. <laughs> Let's have a quick word on Mark Selby. He's always a great professional. He gave us a spectacular evening tonight. How will he be reflecting on tonight's performance, do you think? Yeah, he'd be gutted. He'd be absolutely gutted. You know, you build your season around these big, massive events. He was 4-1 up. He'd been here before many times a champion. To lose from 4-1, he'll be very disappointed. OK, let's take a moment now to have a look at how that draw is shaping up because our semi-final lineup is complete. Sean, I talked about Mark getting some sleep. You're going to need to get some sleep as well because you're only back here in a few hours' time against Ronnie O'Sullivan, and we can't wait for that. Of course, we've got Ali Carter that takes on Mark Allen, and Ali Carter had to endure a 6-5 win over Judd Trump. It was a final frame decider to get himself through to the semi-finals. He's the 2020 finalist, but what a battle it ended up being for him as well, Sean. Yeah, another 11-frame final frame decider scrap. They both gave it absolutely everything. Uh, delighted for Ali, you know, obviously I'm impartial, but delighted for him to see him come back to something near his best. As I said at the time, he's now, I think, going through the best period of his career. How do you see the match between him and Mark Allen now playing out tomorrow night? Well, they both seem to love a decider, don't they? So, 6-5 to somebody. Don't yeah. know. <laughs> and how are you feeling about tomorrow now? Uh, delighted. I'm looking forward to it. Excited, optimistic, really looking forward to getting out there, playing against Ronnie here, and uh, can't wait for the challenge. Well, thank you very much for staying with us. We do really appreciate it because it's an important day for you tomorrow. Let's just remind you of what you can expect tomorrow. That match between Sean and Ronnie is on at 1.15 on BBC One, and then Mark Allen against Ali Carter is from 7 o'clock on BBC Two. Well, thank you for your company, Sean. Thank you for yours. And today will, of course, always be remembered for Mark's magnificent maximum.